So hi guys, welcome back again to the Crime Scene Cleanups Training. My name is Adam Nagy once again. I'm the founder of Guards Cleaning Crew. So in continuing our video about uh, death cleanups, we're going to talk about the different residential surfaces where the body can be found. It can be found on the furniture items like bed or couch. It can be found on f washroom floors, bathtub, kitchen floors, uh, living room floors, bedroom floors. Uh, these are different surfaces where the body can be found. Now, of course, when you go to do work, the body won't be there, if that was your burning question in your mind right now. So, uh, different commercial uh, settings or surfaces where the body can be found. It can be uh, in the, again, some of the couch, chair, table, in the washroom stall, in the, on the floor, on the uh, kitchen, uh, their uh, office kitchen, in the office floor and the factory machinery area so if you have to work on the machinery and stuff like that make sure everything is disconnected wired down hallways walkways different surfaces the body can be found outside right so on the exterior so on a patio balcony uh, sidewalk or outside side entrances so uh, these are the different uh, surface types and uh, you know so how do you know how to clean these places so as we mentioned in the first part that there is a road map, there is a method to the madness. So first of all, what you determine is if the body was found in the porous or non-porous surface. So what is porous or non-porous? So the definition of porous means having minute spaces or holes through which fluids, liquids may pass by. So what it means is that, you know, anywhere where the, uh, the surface area is such that blood which has uh, as you understand not just uh, uh, water content but also oils fatty oils uh, so any uh, surface like that where the body or the fluids can pass through to the next lower level so the subfloor that surface is pretty much porous in nature uh, and and like uh, so surface types which like for example wood flooring has uh, small small tiny holes and so does concrete concrete is uh, porous in nature and uh, laminate flooring now laminate flooring they will tell you that it's non porous but what happens is that that the uh, gaps between the planks uh the fluids do seep through and go down to the surface below so laminate flooring most of the times if there's a lot of blood in case of like let's say again a homicide or suicide or not, most likely the blood has gone down to the uh, floor below concrete floor so non porous examples are glass metal um tiles polished marble flooring so tiles are actually a very good example that's why the tiles are found mostly in the washrooms as you can imagine or as you are aware of and so blood on non-porous surfaces even if it's a lot it would have not gone down to the floor the subfloor below so so what if the body was found on the couch or the bed well in that case the couch or the bed they are both mattresses they're porous in nature once they're contaminated there's no way to salvage them so they have to be disposed of and as i mentioned for the disposal part you have to look into the each city or township or that you are part of and see how the disposal system works over there okay so um, again to keep the course brief and only to focus on the cleanup part of the process so that you're confident of doing the work and getting out of there so uh, things like, again, like, like bedding, clothing uh, that you find on the spot, if they're soil contaminated, that they should also be disposed of. Now, if the client tells you that, no, I want to keep certain items, they are very valuable to me, then uh, what you can tell them is that, uh, you know, uh, let's say, for example, a piece of paper document, that too, you have to tell them that they can take a picture of it. Maybe that's the best case scenario. And then they should be disposed of because, again, uh, paper and stuff like that, once it's soiled, uh, paper is, of course, porous in nature. It cannot be salvaged. Now, we're going to talk about different surfaces. And the first one we're going to talk about is carpet. So if the body was found on carpet, then depending on the amount of blood, you know, if there was a lot of blood, then for sure, you'll have to cut out that section of the carpet and throw it out. And then decontaminate the subfloor, which in a house, you're going to find OSB boards or plywood or or yeah and in in apartments and in condos you're going to find concrete or also in commercial settings you're going to find concrete underneath so you have to decontaminate the subfloor now in some scenarios even if there's a lot of blood you know the owner or the client 
or maybe it's a tenant who is renting the place and he may say that I cannot have I don't have the approval to remove the uh, section of the flooring so please just clean on top now you have to tell them that if there's a lot of blood there is just no way it can be cleaned on top that section just has to be disposed of but if it's a very less amount of blood it's just a section small spots of blood that can be cleaned up by just using a brush a hard brush and the decontamination agent and you have to just brush back and forth and the stain you have to also tell the client that you before you start the work that the stain may not percent come out and you will try your best okay next is hardwood or parquet flooring now parquet flooring is found mostly in uh, old uh, apartment buildings or old condos now that's also hardwood flooring too so if uh, the blood again was found on hardwood or parquet flooring then for sure again because hardwood space between the two planks or the pieces the blood for sure would have again uh, depending on the amount of blood would have gone down to the section below the section of the uh, hardwood flooring has to be removed and disposed of and then the subsection the subfloor has to be decontaminated again you will find plywood or osb boards underneath if it's a house or townhouse if it's a uh, commercial setting or it's a condo or apartment you're going to find concrete which needs to be decontaminated now in some scenarios if, again like i mentioned if the owner is renting they may insist that you only clean the floor on top now it's a hardwood flooring if there's a lot of blood too uh what's going to what you're going to find is that the panels they start to open up you know the blood if has gone through you will see that the the gaps have widened because the wood has absorbed the blood and they have opened up more so you can clean the surface on top decontaminate the surface on top but like i mentioned you have to be uh, you have to advise them that for sure the blood is underneath and you know uh, sooner or later the uh, they might see the blood seeping into some other parts of the house or condo whatever it is and the best course of action is to remove the section of the flooring and do it properly and again, like I mentioned, if the, uh, uh, the if they mention that they only to do the surface on top, then you can just use a green scrubber, a uh, hard brush. And you have to also again advise them that the, uh, the the stain from the hardwood flooring may not come off, especially because blood has oils, uh, fatty oils. So the stain, once it's stained, it may not come off. Okay. Laminate flooring, as I was mentioning, that there are more and more we are fi finding in common the uh, houses and condos, new condos apartments as well they're starting to install laminate flooring as a cheaper alternative to hardwood flooring but laminate flooring too even though it's supposed to be non-porous but because of the planks where they set up where they're connected where they lock in to each other blood does go through those sections and does um yeah, go down to a section below so same like hardwood if there's a lot of blood then the intersection of the laminate flooring needs to be removed and disposed of and then again if there's uh, again if there's a lot of blood the tenant or the owner may insist that they just want the surface to be done again in that scenario once again to remind them that this is not good that for the property contamination the section has to be removed and disposed of but if they do insist on having the top part done then of course just do the again same procedure of using a uh, paper towel your green scrubbers and the decontamination agent uh, to decontaminate the top surface concrete flooring a concrete flooring is porous in nature so the stains won't come off once the uh, fluids uh, especially for where places where the, the body was found after maybe two weeks three weeks the stains once they are stained the concrete in, in it will not come off no matter what you use no matter what pressure washer you use as well so you treat the upper surface only and again you were using a hard brush and a decontamination agent plus the paper towels you work and clean it now we're going to show you videos of how to do the work but just to give you a brief overview right now of how we're going to go about it and also in the next video we're going to talk about in detail more how to do the cleanup so so far we were just talking about you know the, giving you the preliminary information as to the different depth types different um, timelines different surface types where the body can be found and now we're going to move on to how to do the actual work um, for the depth types okay and yeah so lastly before we uh, round it off the tiles flooring tiles flooring is the easiest to clean because it's non porous in nature and uh, as i mentioned they are found in uh, washrooms and kitchens 
and uh, yeah so a lot of fluids uh, water falling in those sections and still they're very easy to clean so the, it doesn't go down to the subfloor unless the tiles are broken yeah it's a very old place the tiles are broken then there's a possibility that it's gone down to the subfloor but if the tiles are in good condition there's no crack whatsoever then for sure the uh, the uh, the blood has not gone down to the uh, subfloor and you can just uh, clean the top part so again use a hard brush and a decontamination agent plus paper towels to do it catch you on the next video